Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. A man must be born to be a king or trained for it. Daniel Dravitt and Peachy Carnahan had neither qualification. Indeed, all they had was ambition. But they made it. And they learned the hard way that uneasy lies the head that wears a crown. Listen. Listen, then, as Dan O'Hurley stars in Rudyard Kipling's great story, The Man Who Would Be King, which begins in just a moment. This is Frank Knight speaking for Longines, the world's most honored watch. It's wonderful to win a Nobel Prize in science, a Pulitzer Award in literature, an Olympic gold medal in sports. In the field of time, did you know that Longines watches have won more great public honors for excellence elegance, and accuracy than any other watch in the world. This is true. For close to a century, the highest authorities have ranked Longines watches as the finest achievement in the science and art of watchmaking. Yet, for a surprisingly modest cost, you may own or proudly give a Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, styled with distinction, cased in precious metal, promising a lifetime of faultless timekeeping. See your authorized Longines Whitnor jeweler. He will be honored to serve you. And now, The Man Who Would Be King, starring Mr. Dan O'Hurley. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. It's dull and lonely standing the dog watch in a newspaper office any place in the world. But in India, in June, it's also hot and stifling and very quiet. I was so occupied one night with nothing more important to do than wait for some trivial item to clatter over the wire from Europe. And my office door slowly opened. And a man, no, a ghost, stood there. His cheeks were deep hollows above his staring round eyes. And his clothes were rags hung on a frame of bone. You don't know who I am, do you? No, no, I haven't the faintest idea, but here, you, you'd better sit down, old fellow. You look in a bad way. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's, uh, it's a whole year I've been walking. Right here in this very office we settled it. You sitting right there and giving us the maps and uh, laughing at us because we wanted to be... Kings. (laughs) Kings. <laughs> and so we was. We was kings. And you've been sitting there all that time. Three years. Oh, no. No, a, a man couldn't change that much in three years. You're not Peachy Carnahan. Yes, and I was the king of Kafiristan. Me and Daniel Trafford, real crown kings we was. Just as true as gospel. What in the name of heaven have they done to you, Peachy? Peachy? I, 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 I knew Peachy Carnahan was. He's, uh, he's a king. Wears a real golden crown on his head. So help me, he, he does. He's, he's dead now, though. No, no, no. You are Peachy Carnahan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, look, you've got to keep looking into my eyes, and maybe everything won't go to pieces. All right. Now tell me what happened, Peachy. Well. We left that caravan we was traveling with at Jagdalla. We uh, struck off into the hills alone. Go on. Oh, weeks it was we traveled. First, there wasn't no roads, and after a while, no food. But there was always the drums. Uh, Move along there. They don't even starve the same as ourselves. They'll go no further. Well, then we'll go on without him. I've not come this far to die on the side of a mountain. Wait, wait. Look, Daniel. Over the edge of the rocks. What? Oh. Men they are. Uh, There's a score or more of them. And look. One is going ahead of the rest. And nothing but bows and arrows. 
Make out a pair of the rifles, Peachy. Reach hard on you. It's now that we start to become kings. Right. Here you are. Yes. Now then, Peachy. I'll drop the straggler at the rear first, and then we'll lay a few at their feet. No arm to the one in front. We may need him. Yeah. Now. Ah, there, I've got him by the old Nick. Hold it, Daniel, hold it. Hey, look at them. Aye. Flat on their blooming faces. Their leader. He's coming out alone. I await your command, O ye who speak in the voice of thunder. By the Lord Harry Peachy, we're in luck. That's the old Afghan tongue he speaks. Speak up. Who are you? Where do you come from? I am high priest and chief of the village of Baskai. A journey of only a few heartbeats. What's your name? Mazukan Jabdalu. That's too long. What shall we call him, Peachy? Uh, do, you know, do you know, he has the look about him of an old soldier and friend of ours. Huh? Billy Fish. Oh, so he does, yeah. We bestow a name on you. From now on, you'll be Billy Fish. As you command, I obey. All right. Then put this on your drums. Tell them two kings have come out of the mountain tops. Two kings that speak in words of thunder so the earth trembles. Tell them two kings have come to Kafiristan. <laughs> You need Mutual of Omaha's longer, stronger hospital insurance. Modern hospital insurance that's right for you. Single men and women, entire families, even senior citizens, no matter how old, can be protected by Mutual of Omaha hospital insurance. Here's what you need. You need modern insurance to help meet today's higher costs. Longer, stronger hospital insurance by Mutual Benefit Health and Accident Association. Call your local Mutual of Omaha agent in the yellow pages. Or write Mutual of Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska for information on plans available in your state. And remember this, you can save money when you add Mutual of Omaha long-term coverage to your group insurance. The savings you make depend on your age and the type of group insurance you have. Write for details to Mutual of Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska. And now, starring Mr. Dan O'Herlihy, Act Two of The Man Who Would Be King. And you, Peachy? Daniel, well, why are you sitting here in the dark? I've been thinking. A man has to stop and think sometimes. Eh, uh, about, uh, anything special, Daniel? Look at them, Peachy. Look at their blinking campfires gleaming in the dark like the jewels in a crown. Ah, uh, yes, Daniel. You've done a fine job for sure. All 23 villages you joined together as one. Uh, they're ours now. Every man, jack, woman, and child. We own them, body and soul. Aye, we're kings now, Daniel. Not proper kings yet, but we will be. Oh, uh, 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 sooner than you think, Peachy. Huh? How's that? Billy Fish told me something today that fair amazed me. These people know the craft. What? You mean that... The Freemasons? <laughs> oh, Daniel, it can't be possible. So help me, it's gospel true. He gave me the grip and everything. It's old masonry, is. It's older than the memory of man. And up here in the hills, they've been preserving it all these years. Yeah. Well, why, some of the high priests know up through the fellow craft. But they don't know the third degree. See it, Peachy? They don't know the third degree, but we do. Daniel, what is it you're fixing to do? Do? We're going to be proper kings. We've got them going and coming. Now, I'm going to turn the whole country into one grand lodge, raise some of the priests to third degree, and for me, <laughs> I'll be the grand master of Kafiristan. You haven't got the right to. 
We never been officers in no lodge. Yeah, right. What's a king got to do with asking for a right? I'm against it, Daniel. It's no good to go fooling around with the craft. Ah, you talk like an old woman. The thing will work. I know it will. We'll make it a blooming ceremony. Regular aprons with the symbols and the marks. Oh, for us, Peachy. The king's a kafiri star. Everything is prepared, and the priests and the people wait. Oh, <laughs> I haven't much longer, Billy. Here now, Peachy, how do you like my apron? Ah, oh, it's a wondrous sight for fair, Daniel. Yeah, it's made of white ermine skin, it is, and the master's mark with emeralds. Come along now. You ready, Peachy? Right with you, Daniel. Then out we go and onto the temple steps. Oh, we'll give them what for. Knock their blinking eyes out, that's what we'll do. <laughs> Look at them, Peachy. Right down on their blooming knees and yelling their full heads off. Oh, it is, it is, it is a, a, a good thing to be a king, Daniel. And where you are, Master. They recognize the mark. That great stone in the floor. Why do they turn it over? Wait. Speak up, Billy Fish. What's the meaning of it? See for yourself. Look. Daniel. Carved on the back of the stone. Yeah. It is the Master's mark, all right. And the same as the sign you wear. Only a few of the priests have known of the hidden mark on the stone. What does it mean? The many who have doubted you were a god... Doubt no longer. Now, and, and you, Billy, what do you think? I, Master, I think that now it is the time for these. Daniel. Golden crown. Ah, how they glitter. They fit for the brow of a king. Oh, ho, ho. Tis what we come for. Here, here, here now. Put him on. And we'll crown ourselves in our own right. Yeah! <laughs> Listen to me. You know something, Peachy? We come here to be kings, and that's what we are, all right. But blame you, we ain't a couple of blooming gods to boot with a million people bowing on their knees before us. <laughs> Mark that wind outside, Peachy. Winter's about due to strike and fill the trails with snow. There'll be a little moving about before spring. Uh, you're right. Yeah, I've been thinking. A man gets lonely in the winter and cold. Why? So, Peachy, I've decided to take a wife. A, a wife? Yeah. Who? My room. The girl who brings the food... Oh, she's a well-favoured wench. But you, you can't do it, Daniel. We made a contract with each other. That was until we was kings. Well, kings we've been these many months now. Ah, uh, it's no good. It's no good. I'll tell you now I'm against it. Against it. You, you was against using the craft, too. But look what it done for us. This is different. Billy Fish will tell you no the same as I do. Billy Fish, yeah. Who's the king here, him or me? Me mind's made up. Three days from now, I shall have me a wife. And you can put it on the drums and tell every blighter out there in the hills the kingdom of Kafiristan is going to have a queen. Yeah, what's keeping her, Peachy? They should have brought her in here half an hour ago. Oh, I, I don't know, Daniel. Uh, how about you, Billy Fish? You put them up to stalling off deliberate like? Certain preparations must be made, Master. She's uh, across the court with some of the priests. Maybe they're trying to hearten her up a bit, Daniel. Uh, she she thinks she's going to die, you know. Die, indeed. Well, I'm Master, only... it is against the laws of heaven for a woman to marry a god. I'm not a god. I'm a man. You know that by now, Billy. I should not want to think so, Master. But either way, this can mean only trouble. I beg you to reconsider. Then I beg you to shut up, Billy. I'm through with waiting. I'm going over there. Master, please. We've got to go with him, Billy. Come on. Go on now, you bungling fools. Bring out the girl. <laughs> well, now, that's better. Here yeah, I go. This is no way for a bride to behave. Come on, a smile now. You can give us a kiss. Oh! 
What? Yeah, wench has bitten me. The blood, master. Don't let them see the blood. Look! Blood! Oh, you're oh, you're oh, you're oh, you're oh, Blasted. What is this rot? Master, it is too late. They're coming with knives. They can't do this. I'm the king. We've got to run for it, Master. Come on, Daniel. Come on. One hundred and thirty people killed by fire at sea. The captain dead, perhaps poisoned. And the chief engineer sat helplessly moaning and wringing his hands. Was there a murderer on board? Now, read in the latest issue of Look Magazine the mysterious and incredible story of the ill-fated vessel, the Morrow Castle. You folks who enjoy the action and thrills of suspense will be particularly fascinated by Look Magazine's detailed report of the death of the Morrow Castle. Did the chief radio operator deliberately touch off the fire, or was he really a hero? Were 130 people murdered and the Morrow Castle burned to hide evidence that the captain may have been poisoned? Get the chilling answers in Look. Learn and look about the one man on the ship who was acclaimed for superhuman devotion to duty and how he was later imprisoned for the bludgeon murder of two of his neighbors. Find out in Look how it was discovered that there was a pathological fire setter aboard the Morrow Castle. Don't miss Fire at Sea in the new issue of Look Magazine. It's on your newsstands now. Get Look today. And now, starring Mr. Dan O'Herlihy, Act Three of The Man Who Would Be King. Yeah. Confounded heathens. I'll come back. I'll come back and beat their blasted dead in. That's what I'll do. Oh, uh, yes, Daniel. Yes, we'll be back. All right. How much further, Billy? Only a short way beyond this ridge, Master. Yeah. Well, so far, so good. Huh. At least them blooming drums have stopped. Uh, we're at the top now, Daniel. Uh, and a right good climb it's been. Whew. Wait. Huh? Look. It seems the drums have come before us, Master. Cut off. No less than a thousand of them standing there. Quiet like with them wicked long knives in their hands. Uh, there'll be no getting past them, Daniel. No. We're done for. Go on back, Billy Fish. Take your men away with you. Go with him, Peachy. It's me they want. I did it. Me. The king. No, Daniel. We made a contract, you and I. Billy Fish, you clear out. I am your friend. I stay with you. Oh, you're a good man, Billy. They're coming now, Daniel. Hey, Petrie, oh, I... No, 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 forget it, Daniel. I, I, I forgive you freely and fully. Oh. All right, then let them come. There's one thing they can't change, Petrie. We've been kings. Kings in our own right. Kings of all Kabiristan. Yes, the sliced open poor Billy Fish, like a blooming heron, the dead. There, in the snow and the rocks. Oh, Lord, man. But you, Peachy, you got away from them. Eh? Got away from them, did I? Oh, no, no. Strung me out on a tree. Drove nails right through me hands, they did. See? Uh, <laughs> but I fooled them all right. Because uh, uh, morning came and I, I wasn't dead. And uh, uh, th then I made them think that I'd lost my senses. <laughs> and they was afraid to harm me. Because crazy men is protected by Allah. Well, uh, they cut me down then, and uh, after a while, uh, they let me go. You poor devil. What of Drevet? What happened to Daniel? Daniel? Uh, uh, Daniel's a, a king, and he wears a golden crown. Yes, but, but now, what happened to him? He's never left me. All them long months, 
walking on the road back, he kept me safe. The mountains, they danced at night. But Daniel held up his hand and and Peachy came along, bent double. I never let go of Daniel, and Daniel never let go of me. He's with me now, here, in this bundle. You knew all Daniel, sir. Him, there was a, a king once. Look at him now. Oh, my... Oh. Well. And now, you've seen that we was really kings. Eh? I'd be on my way. Uh, you'll, you'll pardon me, sir. I let him go. There was little else to do. He was only hours away from his death. I sat there and stared at the contents of the bundle he had left lying on my desk. Stared as the pale shafts of dawn struck fire in the red beard. Stared at the golden crown sitting too large and too heavy upon the wrinkled, mummified head of Daniel Dravot. The man who would be king. Suspense, in which Mr. Dan O'Herlihy starred in William N. Robeson's production of The Man Who Would Be King, adapted for radio by Les Crutchfield from a story by Rudyard Kipling. In a moment, the names of our supporting players and a word about next week's story of suspense. A bunch of the boys are whooping it up every weekday on CBS Radio. Variety spices the airwaves with fun every time CBS Radio turns them loose. The boys are Pat Buttram, Art Linkletter, and Galen Drake. Here's a threesome that's really awesome for its total output of sheer pleasure. The remarkable wit of Buttram, Linkletter's unending imagination in creating stunts and surprises, Galen Drake's way with words and stories. Put them all together, and you have a distinctly flavored different sound only a network could assemble for your weekday pleasure, and only the CBS radio network does. Listen in daily, or as often as you like. With these boys whooping it up as you move about the house, one thing that's out the window with the dust is boredom. The Galen Drake Show, Art Linkletter's house parties from Hollywood, and Pat Buttram's Just Entertainment. One at a time or all together, they're good, clean fun in every weather. Try them often. Supporting Dan O'Herlihy and the man who would be king were Lillian Bayef, Ben Wright, Jay Novello, and Richard Peel. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with Mr. Raymond Burr starring in Edgar Allan Poe's great classic of terror, The Pit and the Pendulum. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Get the complete news first on the CBS Radio Network.